so yes, yesterday, sorry for my voice, it's early in the morning, and I'm always a zombie in the morning, but I am still in bed, <laughs> and it's 10 o'clock in the morning. Yesterday, I did finish the audiobook, so I finished the graveyard book, and oh my word, I love that book. I rated it 4 out of 5 stars. It's one of those books where it's a bunch of different stories all in one book. And it, it's it's just a bunch of different stories, but it's all the same characters. It's like, as the boy grows up in the graveyard, like, at this age, this thing happens. At this age, this thing's happen. And at this age, something else happens that relates to the first one, but, like, you're not lost if you didn't read it. I love it so much. It's such a wholesome, like, perfect Halloween book, but, like, it just made me so happy. Like, I love the characters, and I love the names, and I just, I just love everything, how it was put together. So, that means that I have completed another challenge. I have now read three books, and I have completed three challenges. I have started Frankenstein, and I am on chapter three of Frankenstein. The hard thing is that Frankenstein, at the beginning, had letters, and that has part one, part two, and part three. So, I read the letters at the beginning, and I'm on chapter three of the first part. Um, it's not quite 200 pages, I think it's like 197 pages, and the pages are pretty thick, but I am also reading it a little bit slower, just because, you know, it's a little bit of an older book, I really want to understand everything that's going on. I'm debating on reading Stalking Jack the Ripper right now, because I know, like, that's going to be a quicker read, even though it is a bit longer, it's over 200 pages. Um, so I'm deciding what I want to do with that. I think I'm going to read a little bit more Frankenstein since I did start it and just see, like, how fast or slowly it's going because the chapters are pretty short and I am very motivated with short chapters. <laughs> Let me know if you can relate to that and the shorter the chapter, the better. Um, but yes. So I will continue reading Frankenstein, but I might switch over. We shall see. I have a couple hours to just kind of chill in bed. I got all my homework for Monday done, so like, I can just kind of relax a little bit this weekend. Yeah. I am going to a haunted house tonight, so that will take a bit of time out of my day, which is why I'm sending, spending this morning and early afternoon reading as much as I can of the last two books that I have to go. Yay! Otherwise, I also um, can read tomorrow as well, because tomorrow is the last day, but like, I don't have to work Monday morning. So I can stay up a little bit later, and I'll be okay. So I believe I can get this done, and I believe that you can get this done, however far you are at this point. So yeah, happy reading. So I've been really bad about doing this vlog. And this readathon may not have gone as planned, but I'm still trying. So, it is Sunday, it is the last day, and it is 6.45 at night. Yesterday I did some reading, and then I went to a haunted house. I went to Valley Fair, and they had these haunted houses all set up through the park. And we had a lot of fun, and then we came back, and I was super tired, and then I went to sleep, and then I woke up, and I, I finished Frankenstein today, which was pretty big, because I was only a few chapters in. Um, to Frankenstein. I liked it. I feel like there were a couple paragraphs that were just flat out unnecessary, repetitive, and meh. But overall, I did really like it and I found it interesting and I can definitely see why it's on a lot of high school and college reading lists because it's definitely a very discussion-filled book um, and I would love to discuss it with you guys so comment down below if you want to get that discussion started. Um, but I did really enjoy it and I'm thinking 3.5 maybe four stars kind of going back and forth because goodreads will only let me do three or four and i'm like but 3.5 yeah so 3.5 is my unofficial i still got to figure out what my official one is um but that also means <laughs> that i have five hours to read stalking jack the ripper i have so far read i have thus far read one chapter it is a 300 page book with 30 chapters so let's see if I can get that done in 5 hours and 15 minutes. I probably won't, but I'm going to try it anyway. Um, and that'll be the end of this spookathon. So my first year doing it, not the most successful, but you know, that's fine. 
To each their own. You know, the one that this is fulfilling is Read of Thriller. And I'm sure I'd, some of the other books I read were thrillers, right? Right? So, like, if you stack books for challenges, then I've completed it, but... I don't know, that was not my initial intent, and so therefore I have not completed it. But we shall see. I should stop vlogging so that I can get to reading it. So I'll give you an update a little bit later. Bye. It is 11.43, and I finished Stalking Jack the Ripper, my fifth and final book for Spookathon. I finished it with 15 minutes to spare. Well, technically 17, but who cares? Woohoo! I did it. I didn't think I would, but I did. And let me tell you, this was quite the book to end the sun. I gotta say, it's a really good Halloween read. I'm slightly freaked out a little bit, but it's great. <laughs> so, yeah. And with that, I'm gonna head to bed, because I have meetings all throughout tomorrow as well as class. But I will be doing a review of each of these books at the end of this so I guess for you in like a couple of seconds who knows anyway of just my opinions on all the different books I'm still debating whether or not they will have spoilers if they do have spoilers then I will let you know because I really I did enjoy this book a lot but I also want to talk about the ending and I don't want to ruin it for you so yeah with that Spookathon is officially over for me, and I'm gonna go to bed because sleep. I will see you all in the morning. Happy Monday, everyone. Yes, Spookathon is now officially over for this year. Very sad, but what can you do except anticipate next year and get ready for next year? Because yay, I just love Halloween. Halloween has not passed yet, but you know, Spookathon has, and that is just a sad time. But now that it is Monday and it is the end, I'm going to go through and do a short little review of all the books I've read. I'm going to go through them in the order that I finished them. As to not be confusing, I did kind of do like first reactions a little bit with each of the books, but now I'm going to like actually say this is what this book is about and this is what I liked and yada yada. So the first book that I read, well I have all the books behind me as to make this easier and also just kind of theme the whole background. Everything, sorry I already took it down, but everything from around here is like Halloween-y except everything everything over here, but that's because I was running out of books that I brought from home and it's one that I'm going to be reading, but that'll be at the end of the video. Anyway, first one, House of Salt and Sorrow by Erin A. Craig. I loved this one. There were a couple points where I wasn't expecting it and a couple points where I had like ideas and I was like, oh, it'd be really cool if it was this, but it ended up being something different and it was kind of nice. Um, the main character was pretty alright, so it's about, yeah, this family that has, um, there's the father and he has 12 daughters and he has just remarried. And so it's about all these girls who have a stepmom, except they're all being murdered slowly, one off at a time, starting at the top, so the oldest, then the next oldest, then the next oldest, until the fourth one has died. And you start with her funeral, with her death, at the very beginning of the book, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> Funeral's fun. Eh. Um, but yes, I very much enjoyed it. It's about the main character. She is right in the middle of all these girls, so she's not the youngest and she's not yet the oldest. Um, and she is trying to solve these murders and try to stop them from happening um, while at the same time dealing with problems with her stepmom and um, just life on an island, honestly. You know, these girls are trying to be married off because no one wants to date them because the guys are afraid that they're just gonna die, which is really sad. One thing I love about this book is I love the description of the dresses. like. When they dress up and go to parties and balls and like their shoes and things like that, like it's it's described really well in this book and it, it just it sounds like a fairy tale when I read it and I absolutely loved loved it when they went to the balls because then I would read about their outfits and their makeup and their shoes and I was like ah this is so cute. 
Um, so it had really good description. I also love the mythology behind it. There were like little hints of it here and there. Um, so it wasn't super overwhelming, but it was also, you know, part of the culture as them living on this island. So, and of course there is a romance plot. There, as I said during the video, um, there's a bit of a love triangle, but that is shut down pretty quickly, which I really appreciated. Um, but then at the end when you learn something about it and you're like, oh, okay. I, I love talking about books and it's hard to talk about books without like talking about the ending. So I'm warning you now, okay, flashing, spoilers are coming. Spoilers. Yeah. So there is the guy who's been her friend since childhood. And then there's this other guy, and then you find out that, like, the guy from her childhood was dead the entire time, and it was just this evil, like, spirit thing, I don't even know, like, inhabiting his body during all that, and, you know, and like, I was personally rooting for that, because I was against, like, the new guy, I was like, uh, I hate it when new people show up, you know, always stick to the original, but then it turns out he wasn't even alive, he was controlled by this creepy ass witch thing, and you're like, oh, so like, oh my goodness, that drove me wild, I was like, holy crap, and that is just so trippy about like the illusions and like literally her mission of driving them insane by like, giving them dreams and visions and like oh my word that would just I would honestly kill myself if that happened like I it would honestly drive me insane as was the whole point of the book but oh my word that ending was just intense okay spoilers are done now you're all good if you reach this point or beyond all good no more spoilers for this book at least. Next book that I read for this spookathon was Murder on the Orient Express. So this copy specifically has all the different Hercule Pirat mysteries. Hercule Pirat. I took French for four years. I know what I'm saying. Mm -mm. Nope. Anyway, so this has more than just the Murder on the Orient Express, but I just read the Murder on the Orient Express. Um, but I will be reading more because I did enjoy this book. I, I was sitting through and I was like, I'm going to catch all the little details and I'm going to solve this. And then like, I didn't. And I didn't solve it. Well, no, I didn't solve it. But I really liked it. I enjoyed all the different characters and I really do love this setup. And of course, it's a good traditional whodunit. Which is always great. It's always perfect for, like, this time of year. So, I mean, there isn't too much to say about it because it's a classic. And, like, it's really nice. So, that's the spoiler-free part of the review. If you have not read this book somehow, or you don't know what happens, and you would rather read it to find out rather than, like, watch the spoilers of this video, then skip ahead. But, okay, so obviously these spoilers are, like, very telltale, so spoiler time! Spoiler, 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 spoilers! Everyone, literally everyone on the train hated him and wanted to kill him and teamed up together, like, that is one of the most organized things ever in life, like, to get all these people from all these different places with these different kinds of connections to like come together on a train be seemingly random and just kill a guy all together like whoa <laughs> that's what blew my mind not always the necessarily like super clever things about the detective but like how they all came together and did that I did, oof, my goodness um but honestly, there was one thing in here that I did catch and I was very proud of myself for was that the H on the handkerchief is actually the Russian N. Being a Russian student and, you know, learning the Russian language, 
I had an idea of, oh, I know the Cyrillic alphabet, so like, what if it's not an H? What if it's actually the N sound? Because there is a Russian whose name starts with N, like, but not very many people could put that together without having previous knowledge of the Cyrillic alphabet or Russian or Ukrainian or anything that follows that rule. <laughs> um, but I was very proud of myself for that, but otherwise, yeah, great book. And end of spoilers. The next book that I read was actually the audiobook, and that was the grave book. No, that was the graveyard book by Neil Gaiman, and I gotta say, that was probably my favorite of the spookathon. Like, I admired all these different books for all these different things, but like, the graveyard book was my favorite, and on because like, it was very appropriate for Halloween, but it's also like a family friendly book. And, like, I just love how, like, you mix those two together, but also, like, me as a 19-year-old, I loved reading it on my own. So, basically, it's about this boy. His name is Nobody, except they call him Bod. And he basically gets orphaned, and he, the ghosts in the graveyard raise him. Like, so, everyone that he was raised around is dead, they're ghosts, or, you know, things living in the graveyard, but... He's alive, um, so he's trying to learn the different ghost things, and he's trying to navigate that. Um, the nice thing about the book, though, is that it was kind of like short stories. Each chapter was like a different story as he grew up. So, you know, you start off with um, him when he was really young, and some stories about like his experiences younger, and then like when he gets older and he meets these people, and he has this experience until like he's old enough, all the way up until he leaves. Spoilers. <laughs> I need to catch myself before I start doing the spoilers. But um, but yeah, it's just all these different stories and they're all so cute and wholesome, but also still like Halloween, cause like how he would fade into the shadows like a ghost could and like things like that it was really cool. Um, the characters were great, obviously. I mean, yeah. Spoilers for this one. I don't really know if you consider it much of a spoiler, but like when he leaves the graveyard at the very end, cause like he gets old enough and ugh. That, like broke my heart I was like no don't leave Silas no <laughs> but oh uh, and the hounds of God like Ms. L something I don't remember her name I'm horrible at remembering characters names I just can't remember their names unless I talk about them with people anyway not much spoilers for that one but like uh there's very little that I have wrong with that book if anything honestly yeah I just realized I haven't been giving the star reviews for each of them, so I think I did four, four, and Graveyard also four. Again, I don't give out five stars very often because I believe that those are reserved for, like, the perfect book. Um, but I always believe that every book can be better, so you're not going to see me do a lot of five star reviews, but, like, I will do a lot of four star ones. Um, so just have that, like, in the back of your head as this process continues. Speaking of this process continuing, on to the next book. Frankenstein, yay. Yes, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I mean, again, it's another classic that I just hadn't read until now and I shouldn't have waited this long because oh my goodness. This book wasn't as hard to read as I was expecting it was still a bit slower of a read for me just because I had to read it slower to really like understand but it really wasn't as hard as I was expecting it to be which is why I put it off for so long so I was gonna be like oh it's old English I'm not gonna understand it's gonna take me forever <laughs> but no it really wasn't that bad in terms of comprehension of the English language which I should be because native speaker but not really <laughs> not very well apparently I, the characters in this book were very interesting, and I can definitely understand why so many high schools and colleges make their students read this to discuss it, because you can have a whole discussion about, like, who is really the monster, Frankenstein, or his monster, and, like, just a whole, like, human motive thing. Um, so if you guys want to have that discussion, like, comment down below, and, like, we can have the discussion in the YouTube comments, or, 
like DM me on Instagram or on Twitter or you know contact me over Goodreads I don't know but seriously I would love to have this conversation and know what you guys thought about this book um, but yeah so if you don't know somehow Frankenstein is about this man named Frankenstein the doctor's name is Frankenstein not the monster who goes through life and has a very happy childhood but then becomes obsessed with creating life and studying um, the human biology and how it works and he attempts to recreate life and then he's like oh my gosh I created a monster he's hideous he's ugly Blah, run away um, and then these mysterious things start happening in his life because of it um, and you so it's really interesting because you get his perspective like he's the one telling the book but then when he meets up with the monster like in a long time from then and then the monster tells him the story so like the entire book is from Frankenstein the doctor's point of view but you still get to hear about Frankenstein's a monster and what he went through oh my gosh it's so sad it's so sad why is humanity like this like this is so sadly accurate I'm just makes me sad for humanity anyway so yeah that's about all I can say about this book and I'm not gonna do a review with spoilers because eh, don't feel the need but yeah this is a totally fun book I sat down and I read this completely on Sunday I, I started it on Saturday because, like, you've got letters at the beginning, and then you've got three volumes. Each volume has, like, somewhere between eight and nine chapters. So I read the letters and, like, the first two chapters on Saturday. But then I read majority of the book, slash the rest of it, slash most of it, on Sunday, the last day of the readathon, yesterday. And I finished it. Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I can't say that. Maniscalco. Carrie Maniscalco. This book, gotta say, it was not what I was expecting. Because, like, when I first heard about it, I had this idea in my mind about what it was going to be like. And then when I bought this and I read the back of it, I was the girl who loved the Ripper. Then I had a whole new, like, whoa, it's totally not what I expected it was going to be. And then I read the book and I was like, that still is not even close to what I expected it was going to be. So like my first expectation and my third, my first and my second were totally different and then my first and second were totally different than what it actually was. And so it was very, very interesting. Um, so it is about this girl who lives in like, this is in the fall of 1888. And what I really admired about this book was the main character's views and opinions. Of course, of course you're gonna get this from a female main character written by a female author but like it just made me so happy that like she was the main character cuz like so what I'm talking about I'm gonna actually tell you what I'm talking about now what I'm talking about is that the main character Audrey Rose is a huge feminist but she's a feminist that oh, it's so hard to explain like She's not super extreme. Like, here. Let me give an example. She believes that she can have any job that a man can have and do it just as well if she works just as hard. So when she wants to be a mortician, like, she believes she can be just as good a mortician as her uncle, as the other guys, and things like that, which is totally great. But then she was also like, yeah, putting on makeup is fun. I like to wear nice dresses and nice shoes. Sure, I'll participate in the girly things. Just also don't underestimate me and what I can do, which is really nice because I have those exact same opinions. Like I am a very strong like feminist, which really is just another word for believing in equality for both genders. That's what it is. So I very much share the same beliefs as her. Is that like I um, I want to be paid the same amount as any man that I work with on my level and I want to be treated the same as any man in the world and things like that 
but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna dress up or look nice on the occasional day. Like, I don't really wear makeup on a day-to-day -day basis. Obviously, you can tell this by a lack of makeup in my videos, but that's not to say that, like, when a fun occasion arises, I won't put on some, like, mascara, lipstick, or blush or something. Like, I'll still dress up, and I'll still love to wear dresses and heels and embrace all of that, but... Don't underestimate me just because I'm wearing heels. Because you know what? If I kick you wearing heels, it's going to hurt a hell of a lot more than if I was wearing flat shoes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, back to the book. Mini tangent there. But that's what the main character believes, and that was really nice to just kind of connect with her on that level. The only thing is about her is that that's all she talks about is how she wants to be equal with the guys and she wants to do a good job and like she's annoyed with all the girls trying to get her to go to tea time all the time but then she ends up going and she's like oh this is actually kind of nice but like that that's all that I know about her like I don't know of any other hobbies or interests like all she ever talked about was dead bodies and wanting to be treated the same as men so I wish she was a little more fleshed out and a little more well-rounded in terms of just being a human, um, which was probably the only bummer about it. Um, good mystery, interesting. Um, yeah, definitely a page turner. Like I, again, I didn't start this book until like seven o'clock at night and I read it all the way through like in one sitting. I only got up a couple times to like get food <laughs> like that was pretty much it um so i definitely not what i expected i was kind of going into this with a very like oh, of course i chose this book but i actually came out really enjoying it and really liking it um some of the other characters were pretty great um thomas was hilarious and he's one of those characters where like i hate him but i actually just love him so much like yes <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to do a spoiler review for this, so just hang on tight if you haven't read it and you want to, because spoiler time! Spoilers! Spoilers! Okay, biggest spoiler of all happening right here, right now. Her brother was the Ripper? Like, I feel like at some point in the middle of the book, I was like, like, when their dad went away and her brother started getting really stressed, I was like, mm, it's her brother. But then as the book went on, I kind of forgot about that theory because the brother wasn't mentioned all the time and I just totally forgot about him. And so I forgot about my theory of him being the Ripper. And then she was like so focused on her dad and I was like, yeah, it's her dad. It's her... Is it her dad? It is her dad. Is it her dad? It is her dad. <gasps> It's her brother! Oh my gosh, it is! Oh my word! Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Like, at the very beginning, I was like, oh yeah, it's totally Thomas, because, you know, it says, I was a girl who loved the Ripper. Like, you think of, like, that as, like, a love interest. So, of course, you start off the book thinking it's Thomas. And then it's obviously not her uncle, because they actually do take her uncle away during all these events. But then it's like, you're waiting for her to really start to suspect Thomas, and like she jokes about it, and she kind of does, but like she never really goes for it. But like you're waiting for it, and then all of a sudden it really does get tied back to her family, and you're like, okay, so love is not the romantic sense, it's the familial sense. Like, well, that's really cool to just kind of play on us and to like, yeah. I'm always so just books everywhere. Oh, I'm, a, I'm hot. I'm gonna use that as a fan now. But yeah, okay. Spoilers are done. No more spoilers beyond this point. Good book. I rate it 4 out of 5 stars because it's not what I expected and I really enjoyed it. I liked that how the last page, this is not a spoiler, the last page sets up for her next one which was Hunting Prince Dracula. So on the very last page it kind of alludes to like, hey, there's the second one, Hunting Prince Dracula, and I think I might actually read it. If I can get my hands on it this fall, I'm definitely going to read it. Definite recommend.
okay, so that is the end of the review part of this vlog. Um, yay, there you go. I hope you had a also very successful spookathon, and I'm very curious of what books you guys read, how you enjoyed them, if you'd recommend them. Um, if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, like, I'm always up for discussion because that's why I'm kind of doing YouTube is to, like, talk about things and discuss things with people and, like, and if you see this and you're like, oh, she would like this book or I want to hear her opinion on this book, then let me know in the comments below. Feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell so you know that when I upload, although I'm trying to upload every two weeks on Thursday, Friday-ish, depending on you know, just busyness because it is midterms for me right now. So yeah, I spent all that time reading and I have an exam, a debate, a quiz, and a project proposal all this week. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see how wise of a decision this really was, but we'll see. Um, just a heads up, um, I will be posting hopefully a lot of different kinds of videos for you guys, but if you have any suggestions or things you want me to do, also, again, contact me, comment down below, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, something, anything. Um, but my TBR upcoming is, so I brought seven books with me to college, and I bought a few more <laughs> as I was here. Um, but there are two books that I bought and brought with me to college that I have not read yet. One of them being Scythe right here, and this is going to be my next read as soon as, you know, my exams, paper, project, quiz debate happens. As soon as that's all done, I'm going to start reading Scythe because, again, I think it's another good Halloween read and I've still got some time before Halloween and I'm really excited. So that's next up on my TBR, but also Everything Everything, which is a contemporary novel, which is something I do not normally read, but I'm trying to push myself and try new things, new genres. Um, and I'm even thinking about doing videos about reading books of genres I don't normally read and what I thought of them. So if you like that, then like, again, like this video, put a comment down below, just tell me, communicate with me guys. I love communication here. But yeah, so these are the last two books that I brought with me to college that I have not read yet, and so those are kind of next up on my TBR, as well as finishing series of unfortunate events, because, yep, I'm still doing that. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I guess I'll see you guys later when I upload, and Feel free to catch me in the next video.